All right then, guys, we're going to press on with this afternoon so we can get out on site to see the demonstrations and uh, head home nice and early. So, um, you've probably all met us by now, but uh, Richard and I are from Frog Environmental. We started off as uh, ecological and uh, environmental science consultants, but we soon realised that our areas of expertise were in water quality and sediment management, so we stuck to our guns, and this is what we're doing now. Um, a lot of what we've worked with is looking at how to improve water quality and we obviously brought Biohaven onto the UK market and our most recent product is something called Clearflow. It is a flocculent technology and the reason we've done this is because we recognise the importance of sediments within the catchment. It's very difficult to remove dissolved substances from the water without changing the redox value or without changing the pH and in the natural environment, that's nigh on impossible. I mean, it can be achieved, but it's expensive at the moment and difficult to control. So by removing sediments, we can remove a lot of the problems we're looking at here. Um, the reason that's the case is because sediments have got such a huge surface area, especially the tiny micron particles, the 20 microns or less, that means that contaminants lock to them. So phosphates will lock onto them, heavy metals will lock onto them, oils will lock onto them. So if we can remove these tiny sediments, it means that we can remove at the same time the heavy metals, the nutrients and the oils. And so that is really what we've been looking at doing, how to enhance our existing sediments and our existing stormwater sort of management, as it were. So the sediments that come into our catchment comes from lots of different areas. We all know already from speaking today that many sediments come off our farmlands. In fact, based on an Environment Agency report in 2013, 75% of, of the sediment in rivers comes from farms. 25% obviously comes from urban and uh, other activities, um, such as misconnections <laughs> and uh, highways draining drainage as well as industry and mining. So sediments can come or be generated from pretty much anything and it's really important to manage these sediments and the hazards that they bring with us. So we thought we'd introduce the School of Flock because uh, not that many people have had the opportunity to work with flocculants and we thought we'd demonstrate exactly what it is they can do. <laughs> I get the best job. <laughs> So, Richie is going to be my glamorous assistant, and he's going to mix up three tubs of dirty water. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> I'm going to start stirring. Okay, look at this. We're now getting some dirty water. Okay. So, this sediment here is actually quite heavy clay based. So, we chose to use a clay because clay is often the most difficult thing to manage because it's got, it is such a small particle size and you get a lot of it in suspension. And um, as you see, we're going to have three. We're going to have our control. So we're going to do nothing with Con this one. Control's going to be here. Control. No, it's backwards to them. Is it? You do it. OK. That's going to be control, because then you're going to see it in order. <laughs> Left or right? We, we get to argue a lot. <laughs> we work together. <laughs> We're having a control on that. Having control over there, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and in these two, this is a flocculant. Okay, you will have probably all seen them at the back. A flocculant basically causes the sediment particles to lose their charge and start to bind together. So it starts to create lumps or clumps of sediment, which means they're getting heavier. And that heavier sort of lump is the flocculant. That's what we call the flock. Flocks come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, as you'll see as you go through this. So depending on what we put in there, we can get different flocculant shapes and weights. What we have just put in is this. This is what is so new to the UK. This is a slow-releasing flocculant. It's a gel block. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, we're pinching bits off this and just putting it in. And when you get to look at this earlier, you'll see that not much of this is used. In the gel box at the back, that will treat up to 20,000 cubic metres of water. So you can see how slowly it's released and how much water these things will treat. Um, it's really important to get 
good flow over the surface edge. So if I just drop this in a pond that had no movement, it would do nothing. So it's understanding how to use these, and that's why Richard has been mixing it quite vigorously, because we need to get the surface area to shear off. Um, another beauty thing, beautiful thing of this is that um, it can dehydrate a little bit. So we can leave it in the environment, in this state, and it can just sit. And as soon as we add it to water, it hydrates and starts to release. So we can have it in flashy catchments or in streams that don't run continuously. And once they start to run, it will rehydrate and it will reactivate and it will start to work again. So, as you can see, we've got a control on the end that's slightly murky. And these two, the particles are starting to get bigger and starting to settle out on the bottom. And this is actually still a very fine particle, so although it's giving us more water clarity, it's not perfect yet. There is very little that will give you perfect clarity straight away. But something we can do with this product that you can't do with any of the others that I'm aware of is we can duplex or even triplex it. So the flocculants come with different blends, which means that we can manage clays, dredge soils, things with high organics, things out of wash water bays, sandy soils, and different ones will different blends will manage different things. And so what we're doing here is we're putting another one in, which is called a 360, and we'll show what we can do when we duplex it. So you'll see the difference in flocculant size, they become much larger and therefore much heavier. So they fall out of suspension much more quickly, and you will see the water clarity that we're gaining. Slowly gaining, says. she says, with her fingers crossed. No, I did a trial earlier, so just a little one on the back, in a very Blue Peter style. Here we are. I don't know whether people are actually able to see this and the size of the flocculants that are starting to form here, and how quickly they're starting to drop out of suspension now. Here we are. We can. There we go. They're starting to go. They're starting to go. That's it. Typically, we do a jar test in a smaller jar, so slightly larger jars, slightly longer reaction time. Yeah. So these flocculants are completely safe to use in the water. They're environmentally friendly. They break down into water and carbon. Yep. So they don't form anything hazardous. We've got nothing to worry about. They're completely non-toxic to fish, animals, everything like that. They were actually developed in Canada with the Canadian Environment Agency equivalent. So they've been developed with the regulator to make sure that we were getting the best we can possibly get in terms of performance. So, us. Yes, and every single one of the products, just because everything we do, I'm an ecologist, Richard's a scientist, we do not want to cause any damage to the environment. This is not our game. We're not in it to have a big cash rush on block blocks. We're in it to make a difference to the environment. So we've made sure that every single product within this range has got an LC50, which is basically all of the environmental toxicity, the ecotoxicity tests. So we're looking at trout and we're looking at daphnia. So they've all got LC50s and they all obviously come with the MSDS. So everyone can see what they are, um, but principally safe to use. So I just thought I'd run through that and uh, show this some of our rates. Me. Okay. So I, th I think um, going into this area was quite natural for us. Our background in water quality and ecology, we've done a lot of sediment management as well. As a company, we're really focused on research and innovation and trying new things. And we see a huge amount of potential, uh, potential for these products to make a difference to how we manage sediment, uh, creating efficiencies there. So we want people to see this as a great tool. We're going to do some practical examples, uh, which we've set up out in the nursery, which should be quite interesting for you to see but it's a very versatile product it's organic it's organic compounds um, we can use it to take TSS out of water we can use it to bind soils together so that TSS doesn't end up in the water and we can also use it to control dust on a uh, construction sites we've got quite a broad spectrum of um, industries um, we can apply this to uh, lots of forms as well. So it's a slow release block. This block will treat around 20,000 cubic meters of water, which is quite a huge amount of water. 
It's only part of the process though. So once you've actually put water past the block, you've then got to capture it as well. So you're, you're making that sediment drop out, you're making the situation energy limited, <coughs> you're then capturing the sediment, um, and that's all part of that process to make sure it doesn't end up uh, in, in water courses. They're very easy to retrofit. They, they can form any part of the operation or, or part of the construction operation to reduce damage uh, caused from site runoff and such like. We're passing some of these blocks around now. We have one every colour of the rainbow in there. We've got four main formulas, but um, for, uh, for certain situations we might need to formulate more, and that's something we can do. Uh, I was going to say easily, it's not that easy, but, but we can formulate different types of block and, and different blends. All have a slightly different structure, some better for clay soils, some better for others. So the last forages, they're slow release. You can visually check when they're running out. When they, um, if you put it in a flashy channel or something, when they dehydrate, when there's no water there, they, they don't degrade, they'll just stay there. Um, when water comes past them again, they'll, they'll reactivate, essentially. And they can be deployed as part of an emergency response as well. If there was a pollution event happening, they, they can be deployed in that situation to drop sediments out more quickly uh, and help catch them before they start causing significant damage to downstream receptors. Right. So here's an example of um, how they've been deployed in the past. We can pretty much put them anywhere. What you can see here is, is a channel that's been created. Uh, it's been lined. Then there's a jute an organic material liner, and then we've got blocks here. And as the water comes past the blocks, um, part of the, at the edge of that block shears. I should point out, I put some block in here, but that's not used. It's only the very edge of that material that's just degraded from that surface area and been used there. So when, once you've treated that upstream, you're then capturing it on treated jute downstream. And that's something you'll see when we go and have a practical demonstration in the field. Yeah, this is actually on the construction site, they, so they're using this um, just to stop or mitigate the sediments that they're creating because they're doing so much land disturbance from entering the natural water courses. So this is an artificial drainage channel that they've created to treat the surface runoff that they get. <coughs> it's another method of deployment, um, treated curtains for instance, if you're involved in activities that are disturbing sediment, creating an issue there then and actually we can apply a treated curtain really easy to deploy, uh, biodegradable afterwards so it can be dragged to a piece of land and plants will just spring up on it essentially um, and extremely effective at capturing the sediments and stopping them from uh, moving downstream. Yeah. The other thing is we're developing a range of different mesh sizes on the curtains too so if we're pushing it into a fast flowing stream we're using more of a bigger coir and jute mesh size so the water actually still travels through but as it travels through it's picking up the flocculent and then it's being captured on the next net down so we're not causing any flood risk uh, backing up the water whereas in our slower flowing channels we have more thicker coir products where we're actually allowing some filtration as well as release of flocculent so we've got a several products sort of being developed at the moment to fit all the different scenarios that we might come across. And that's really what we're aiming for, is a clean, clear water. It's, uh, you know, we, we see lots of applications for this. We've been working with this company for about a year now. Um, it's found in Canada. Um, the main target there was looking at um, mitigating issues caused by mining. Obviously, we have a more of a mining legacy here than any active mines. But um, what we've just seen here is also is a, is a jar test. That's something we'll do. We've got an internal testing protocol for that. This is slightly scaled up what we do normally, but we're looking for things like uh, reaction speed, how quick does the flock react, um, the flock size that that reaction creates, and also the, the water clarity afterwards. And really, uh, the, the, the process for that, people would send us samples, uh, a water sample and a soil sample from site, or a sediment sample, and, and we'd test various blends, and we would, uh, and we would come up with the appropriate formula, essentially, for being able to treat um, and drop out sediments very quickly. Yeah, it's really important to send the water the water sample that you're getting from site because the water chemistry can alter how the flocculent works. So that's sort of a critical part. But to understand that flocculent, the range of flocculants that we've got, we can go from really acidic waters to a really alkaline water. So there will be a product that we can use to get an improvement. 
This is um, independent testing uh, from a company called Golda uh, Engineering. So this is their test results um, from a project a few years ago. Just highlight a couple of different things here. Obviously the, the, the BOD, the TSS, not closely linked, but significant reductions uh, in both of those. And the total phosphorus as well, a lot of that TP would be bound to uh, sediment. So experiencing 83% reduction or faded on this site. It's not just about the big particles though, but what this product is for is about taking away those small particles, uh, the, the 20 micron and less particles, which are very, very difficult to treat. Um, you can see some of the metals, for instance, copper, we've treated it 80%, but we've got a pretty much a trace amount in the first place, 0.01 down to 0.002. So um, being able to treat trace amounts is a really important aspect, and certainly when it comes to things like uh, manganese, uh, selenium, zinc, uh, this is all very relevant. Um, where we're heading at the moment and what we need to treat some of the challenges that we face in various catchments. There's various ways of deploying it. So Lynx blocks are very simple and a bit agricultural. You sort of stake it in, you can watch the water flow past it, it's releasing a flock, it's, it's, it's dropping the flocks out very easily. Uh, for more uh, engineered methods, there's something called a pipe reactor. Um, in North America they call this a bazooka. But we changed the name of it for here because we thought in these times of terror, it's probably not good to be emailing about you know, using bazookas, you know, that sort of thing. Importing several at a time. Mm. <laughs> but it's a, it's a more effective delivery method. It's a forced delivery method. There are five links blocks that sit in there. And obviously, like Lila said, we can duplex these blocks. So if we just combine them, that's where the sort of magic happens, if you like, in there. And there's a reaction time afterwards. You've got treated jute, which the sediment system will drop out onto afterwards. Again, that's something you'll see. Uh, in the field. And we can be quite versatile with these things. We can, we can put them in line, so we put two or more in line, we can run them parallel. Uh, for instance, the one you see here has got two uh, coming out of it. And again, that's just, it's being treated in the bazooka, it's firing through the pipe, uh, it's landing on the jute. The jute itself is treated with a different type of flocculant, uh, and, and all the sediment's being captured there. None of it's going out into um, into the local water courses. So obviously, like I said, being, being what we're trying to do here. Yeah, and we appreciate this picture. It looks really Heath Robertson, but we wanted people to understand that this is something that could become part of kits. So Volker 7 have several of these now. And it's just so that they can treat sort of wash off water from their vehicles and things like that, where they're collecting it in a sump. And they can treat it on site. They can just lead up to a pump that they've already got, put this in situ, roll out a piece of um, whatever Jeez, that yeah. is, <laughs> plastic to stop the uh, sediment settling on the ground, piece of jute on top and then all they've got to worry about disposing of is the jute in the bound sediment and it just shows how quickly and how simply we can do some of these projects. So. Yeah. Right, I think, let's say about saw links. Okay, yeah. so, so that's the part about treating water, um, dropping sediment out of water. Obviously, treating soil and stopping the sediments from getting into the water course in the first place is also a really important consideration. And that's what I'm going yeah. to talk a bit about. Yeah, again, it's based on the same principle of chemistry, but it's a different product. We're looking at soil links. So, this is where we're applying it to the soil surface itself. Richard, during the Hydro CX um, talk, already mentioned that they use a flocculant within that. That's actually a natural flocculant, so it's not the clear flow flocculant we're talking about, that's a natural gua. Um, this does exactly the same, but better. So if you're doing some hydro seeding, we can add the granules. We've got some granules at the top that I can show people. So it comes <coughs> in a granule form or a powder form, and we can add that and it dissolves. And so you can use that in sprinkler systems, in irrigation systems, and it means it could be spread on the surface of any embankment, on any farmland, and it actually helps retain the structure and the condition of the soil. So you're supporting the farmer to develop better crop systems, you're allowing 25% more moisture to be held within the soil itself. We've got a study, we've done a study with an agricultural college that says that we're getting 75% better germination of seed if they're seeded with this. So it's, it's basically really good and because we were saying that uh, a lot of soil comes from farmland, we're looking at how we might be able to work with farmers to both improve their crop crop systems and use something that's very sustainable to stop the soil migration from the surface. Again, soil stabilisation in situations where you've got this, Hydro CX, great, 
curtains, great. But really, <coughs> if you can add any sort of flocculent into this, you're going to stop some of that migration because it's going to lock the soil together. And this is a situation where we had exactly the same. We put down a jute matting and within that we used a seed mix alongside the soil links. And we're just getting really good growth within a few months. And it's just showing how good it is. You can use it on golf courses or lawns and things like that. And it means that you don't get the patchy grass growth. So it really is exceptional. And uh, we're looking now to combine it with some of our soil stabilisation um, techniques. So some of the stuff that uh, Salix is doing, we're looking at whether we can do combined systems to deliver more efficiency. So this isn't something we offer at the moment, but it's something that we're doing more research into to see whether we can deliver better, more you know, better erosion control products which are still safe and we're getting good results from that. Um, this is just an example of how a ploughed field has been treated on the right hand side um, and you can see the sort of shape and size of the furrows that have been treated and the amount of moisture that's in there and this is several days after it was actually put on. So it's just to give you an indication, a nice visual indication as to how that can take place. Um, as part of our research and development this summer we're also going to be working with two farmers in Norfolk and we're going to be looking at the bioavailability of nutrients. It's something that they haven't done in Canada yet and it's something we were just sort of thinking about as to if we were to lock the soil in place and um, because the flocculent holds on to nutrients so well are they going to be bioavailable for the crops that are growing that season? So it's great for seed germination but is it going to be good for plant growth? or is it going to be one of the slow release over time? So it's something we're looking at because we want to be able to demonstrate a reduced amount of fertiliser use. And this is just looking at some soil structure and it's showing the porosity that we're getting within the soil. So it's making the soil much more fluffy, allowing much more air, allowing much more water to come in there. And um, an analogy that we heard, which was absolutely lovely, is instead of having thick soil, when you've treated it with um, soil links, it is like lowering a chain on, onto the ground. So you're getting all of this interstitial spaces being created and they're held there. So it's something that we think is really important and it's something that we're de definitely developing and we're looking for projects at the moment to really push that. But moving on from that and looking at dust control, it's something we already do. This dust control that we have is DH56. It is in a liquid form, and you just add it to water. 20 to 1 ratio. And you can use any of the traditional sprayers. And it just means that you use less water. So at the moment, our dust control tends to be water, and you use it several times a work day, using a lot of possible water. If you were to put the dust links in there, you go over it once, and the dust links will remain activated for 10 to 12 weeks on average, so based on our experience so far. So that's, that's a significant reduction in the amount of water that we're using, and it reactivates every time we have a rainfall event. So we're not losing it, um, it's just reactivating each time. And we see this as something being really important um, because the type of aggregates that we have here, when the tracks, trucks are going across them, they're being compressed and ground and the particles that we're getting from pull roots and things like this tend not to be charged because they're an aggregate. So they are the most difficult things to get out of water because they don't hold a charge. So we can't cause them to flocculate once, once they're in our rivers. So it's really important that we try to stop dust from ag sort of aggregate roads, as it were. And this is just to give you an idea as to the type of particle size that we're dealing with here, how small they are and what we can actually manage. So you're looking at a human hair as being 50 microns and yet we can tra trap that in a filter system. But we're coming all the way down to less than 2.5 microns here, when we, especially when we're looking at pull roots and how aggregates break up. And that's, that's what's causing the pollution in our waters and that's what we need to try to stop. And uh, as you can see, we're, we're looking at products and trying to achieve that. So, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.